Payne is someone we all know, someone very influential in the series before the huge war, and someone that gets calced and recalced, scaled and rescaled over and over again. People tend to know who Payne is, but today I'm going to be covering Payne in a way that you probably won't be finding anywhere else. Not destructive capacity, not simply the total jewels. We're going to be looking directly at Payne's attack potency down to the cubic centimeter. What you'll have by the end of this is one of the most accurate numbers that can be applied to the actual potency behind his greatest feats. So let's get started. Now in my last Naruto video, I already covered his fight versus Kakashi and we're continuing from there, where we're really going to focus on his first of his greatest feats. Right off the gates, his massive Shinra Tensei that wiped Konoha from the earth, leaving two extremely massive craters in its wake. The very first thing I want you to acknowledge is the outer wall that was to be around all of Konoha. That wall is seen in many different shots later as it was outside of the destruction and stands over the outer crater, much less the inner. The panel where it says Naruto and Pain face off, we are only seeing the outer crater, not the inner, as we can see the wall and the trees that are in that space. And it's not until here that we see the inner crater comparatively. Next, let's consider of course the frogs here. When compared to Naruto himself, we can find that Gemabunta is showing to be around this many meters tall, and from one hand to the other we're talking around this many meters wide from one hand to the other, not just his body. Of course, when we look at the non-colored page, Gemabunta is showing to be but this many meters tall instead and this many meters from hand to hand instead. This gives a range, and it's from things like this that we can use scans to show us the crater sizes such that the inner crater's diameter is approximately this many meters to this many meters based on which scan you use, colored or non-colored. And the inner crater's height would then be approximately this many meters to this many meters, once again based on which scan is used with both larger numbers being based on the colored scan. Yet, this however is incredibly wrong. It shows why you have to be very careful with your scaling. We can see later here that the outer crater is indeed so high up that it is actually higher above even the Hokage faces are, and in fact, any time we've been like seeing pictures of the trees leading to the end of the walls and the outer crater, we've in fact actually been looking from an extreme forced perspective, where we are actually looking up from below, albeit it doesn't seem so forced at first glance. Many of the scans are for this reason almost a trap in trying to scale it accurately. You really need to pick out the correct ones that are the most consistent. Instead, the Hokage faces themselves are the key. This gives us a constant point of scaling that is far more contrastable to the craters than the frogs with, a, literally the frogs are kind of like in the center where we have to like visually go with the depth and try and, you know, be consistent there versus the Hokage faces that are literally on the wall or where the crater, you know, ends. Far more contrastable, far better consistent, you know, vantage point to be using the Hokage faces. So that said, let's look at the consistency here. We can verbatim see the faces of the Kage behind them all while in the deepest crater. We see it here as well. This scan here is the actual best scan to show the outer crater versus the inner crater we were looking at before, and we also can see where the faces are in the same shot. And so for instance, when looking at this scan, we know the faces would be on the rock wall on the right hand side and can compare general height differences from this scan to this one. Due to all this, when looking at the size of the faces and comparing their placements to Konoha, we can find that they are around this many meters above ground as is. So forget the frog scaling of around 20 meters and such, instead it's actually far more consistently showing that the inner crater depth is at least this many meters deep, already factoring in the distance from Hashirama's face to what was the normal Konoha ground and their streets of around this many meters, right? Calc for the diameter and we find about this many meters, putting the volume of just the inner crater to an already astounding this many cubic centimeters. But what about the outer crater then? 
What we find is that when we factor in the already removed volume of the inner crater, which also requires us to factor in the depth of the inner crater versus what the outer crater is using of the total cratering shown, we find a total volume of cratering to be around this many cubic centimeters, leading to a total joules of around this many, or we're talking mid-city level. The AP is... well, it's impossible to tell in a calc as the volume of the attack is unknown, it's just a big shockwave or something, right? However, we've talked about... I've, I've had multiple people bring up like, well, what about the actual scaling in the series? The calcs are showing what you're saying, but that's just the calcing. Where is the scaling? And I've also brought up in other ones, especially with my The True Power of Taguro video that I did last, where I showed what you actually want to look for for scaling, for it to actually matter, right? The last thing that this is scaling above was also a massive AoE. That's not helping any, but I will be covering that. So, yes, I will be showing some scaling in terms of how these feats can be applied. So, for example, not this attack, but all the way back to Daedara C0. That scales above Sakura's full-powered punch and last impressive feat that didn't also require an enormous AoE behind its destruction. By that, I really mean just the small crater alone of his C0. I'm not talking about small crater of the Shinra Tensei here. I'm talking about go all the way back to Daedara. His was double crater that you can see. Just the small crater alone of that feat was already scaling above Sakura's full power contact punch. So, just lowballing with minimal showings and some backscaling, which isn't always the best, but is what we have to work with, we can expect the C0 to have at least this many joules per centimeter cubed, or extreme large building level AP. That's for example, right? Again, however, the Shinra Tensei that wiped out Konoha was already comfortably above that, to enough of a degree that we can absolutely lowball the potency to at least this many joules per centimeter cubed, or city block level. But the actual best comparative feat to it would be the Six Tails Biju Bomb, which Sadly, is just yet another large AoE feat, giving us not much of any AP to work with. But, even though we can't know which is actually more potent between the two, I'm talking about the Six Tails and the Shinra Tensei that wiped Konoha, we can at least acknowledge they are at least somewhat relative, both being in a bracket of their own. Far too strong compared to previous attacks, and yet much weaker than even just the Eight Tails physicals, and I'm talking about Naruto Eight Tails, not B let alone the Chibaku Tensei. They're way, both the Konoha Wipe and the Six Tails Biju Bomb are way below those, right? And it's when we look at the Six Tails Biju Bomb that we can find a total joules of at least this many joules or highish mountain level. And again, the AP is kind of unknown. However, as I've been doing, I've been scaling the Biju Bombs on an IF basis of their AP in such that their volume in just their ball forms before any of their explosions like, I'm using those for the calcs. So if we say that the AP is actually condensed into the small ball before the explosion, which does not have to be the case, nor has it been shown to be the case, that the then the AP would be this many joules per centimeter cubed, or large town level AP. Just to hit on that point, I am taking it such that for these calcs, because otherwise it's impossible to know, I am taking it as though the ball version that we see before the explosion is the full potency. That does not have to be the case. So for example, if you throw a grenade that isn't going to explode, the grenade might bruise a person but is not going to kill them. It requires the explosion to kill a person. There is nothing to say that the ball before exploding doesn't simply carry the kinetic energy difference of like a grenade versus the explosion of a grenade. We see later that, like, the Biju Bomb gets flicked away by, like, the Ten Tails without exploding. Did the Ten Tails actually overpower the full potency of that? Or, because it was still in ball form, it was far weaker? Again, like a grenade that didn't go off. Right? I mean, a grenade that doesn't go off is not going to kill a person. It might bruise them. <laughs> so, it does not require that them in their ball forms are actually their full potency. But that is what I'm taking it as. However, when we look at the AP calc as such, again with the joules per centimeter cubed here, or large town level AP, that right there, that number is actually highly consistent. It's super accurate with the previous scaling, and is right there, 
a big reason that I do believe it is most accurate and consistent to scale it via the size of its initial ball at this point in the series. I'll see if it changes later going on. In scaling to what we've seen prior, especially that massive feat we saw with Sakura vs Sasori, the AP of the Biju Bomb being scaled this way, again using just the initial ball size of it, it simply conforms best to what's been presented thus far in the scaling chain, so it's pretty valid, again thus far. Even worse, we know that this AP amount is actually still too low in the established scaling, not calcs, and its actual AP, while unknown, is definitely higher than the amount shown in the feet, again as you can see here. This feat also does not vaporize rock in proportion to its size. Instead, we simply know it absolutely scales via later feats and that it would be able to if there was that amount of mass for it to be hitting in all places. To be clear, yes, I do in fact consider the Six Tails BG Bomb to be superior to his Konoha wiping Shinra Tensei. I acknowledge, of course, either could scale above the other, but neither scale above something the other doesn't. And so with calcs on our side, the Six Tails BG Bomb is, in fact, superior. But that's nothing. The Chibaku Tensei, however, let's look at that. The same Six Tails firing off his Biju Bomb, it does nothing. To highlight once more, we later see his Eight Tails version straight up overpower and have more force than his Six Tails Biju Bomb with just pure physicals. That's, I mean, that's gonna be impressive for scaling. So how large, however, is this Chibaku Tensei? Because this is the crux of pain scaling. First idea, of course, is to note the mountains and get a basic idea of size, and from there we can estimate its volume to be around this many cubic centimeters, which of course the numbers don't do it justice. I know when you're seeing this big number, it's like, <laughs> it's hard to visualize or think just how big, and I know you have the picture there, but it's hard to just take these numbers if I'm just throwing these numbers. It's a weakness of how I do things, but I can't help but try and be as accurate as possible. But it's extremely massive, of course, with the total mass being around this many kilograms. It's, it's <laughs> insane, okay? But hold up, that crater though, right? That thing is showing to have a volume itself of around this many cubic centimeters. And one last thing to note is the height above the ground where the crater began forming. That Chibaku Tensei is showing to be around this many centimeters above ground. Alright, factor everything in and when looking at this feat's gravitational potential energy which cares about the height difference from the ground to where everything was pulled, we're looking at this many joules or island level total joules. But there's more, it fragmented the hell out of that rocket pulled up, coming in an additional this many joules putting the entire and full Chewbacca Tensei at this many joules or still island level total joules, but make no mistake every bit counts. I mean, it's by far the most impressive feat in the series. Last thing, of course, is to cover the actual AP of it. How much force is it exerting on the cubic centimeter scale such that we know every point of a person's durability is accounted for when trying to take on these forces? Well, sadly, it's extremely hard to try and get a size for this thing. But one thing's for sure, this gain here shows the minimum size, meaning if we use it, we'd find the maximum potency with it necessarily having to have the same total joules packed into the least amount of cubic centimeters. Do this, and we're looking at this many joules per centimeter cubed or large mountain level AP. A huge jump in power for the series. And really note here, I'm acting like that sphere didn't just grow many magnitudes larger here, all right? <laughs> large mountain level is the wank for its joules per centimeter cubed as a calc meaning its range of AP is more along this amount to this amount or small town to large mountain levels for its more realistic numbers. However, we already know it scales far beyond large town AP via its showing versus the Six Tails Biju Bomb, putting its low ball comfortably into the mountain level ranges for its true joules per centimeter cube, so that gets rid of those low ends. So this is a, I mean, it's just a super good showing. Each and every cubic centimeter of space, making up the initial black ball, holds enough force to destroy a mountain, if not more. So that's basically it. Payne doesn't have much more in terms of his big feats, 
But because they're so big, I wanted to commit to a full video on just them, and I'll cover Sage Mode, Naruto, and him more specifically in the next video, where we'll move past Naruto vs. Pain. Except, I do have one more fun thing in mind. More scaling. See, what if there was an attack no larger than a fist, that scaled beyond the entirety of the Chibaku Tensei? Say, 8th Gate Guy's Punches. Same guy who scales a good amount below end of series Naruto and such. What then? Well, we know just the air pressure of his punches were already above the Chibaku Tensei from pain, and given that, this puts his actual full contact punches at a whopping this many joules per centimeter cubed, or small country level minimum. Gosh dang, and this doesn't even cover all the scaling, this is me just jumping to him, right? He was just the easiest for me to jump to before properly finishing the Naruto series scaling. Naruto and Sasuke may really get to Continental AP after all, and it'll be very exciting to have a fully fleshed out chain of scaling breaking it all down to the utmost accuracy for that AP. AP is important, it's what tells us the actual damage a character would inflict on another. I know AP gets mistaken as simply the total jewels or even most of the time just DC. But I hope this really goes to show, down to the most specific level, just how potent the, the series is starting to get, and where it's heading in the future. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to keep up with the new content I'll be putting out, and of course, always feel welcome to comment below. Any questions or points that anyone would like to bring up will be addressed no problem. See you in the next video, and ciao! Master.